Okay, so I just need to focus on my breath, right? Breathe in, breathe out. I really need to finish my research tomorrow. <laughs> oh, come on, don't think. Breathe in, breathe out. Damn, my back is itching. Okay, this is actually hard, but why? Well, it's because people experience a wide variety of subtypes of involuntary cognitions in everyday life. Which means that thoughts, memories and images can appear spontaneously. Simply put, we don't have absolute control over our thoughts. But if we want to understand why this is happening, we need to recognize evolution and natural selection. Because the answer to why we function that way lies within the structure giving past. Living things are basically made up out of genes that literally dictate how your body works and how it is built. Even though these genes change at random via mutation over time, which is part of evolution, the natural selection of the animals or individuals carrying these genes is not. There's a multitude of reasons for why specific genes get carried on and one of them is fitness and more specifically evolutionary fitness. It refers to how well a species is able to reproduce in its environment, meaning that there are specific genes that provide the creature with features or tools that give them an edge over other ones, assuring their survival. And looking at the world through this evolutionary lens provides the insight that biological life has sorted itself out in a way that most features can be explained as design features that increase fitness and in return survival. Take our senses for example. They are extremely well-developed navigational tools that allow us to interact with the environment, providing extreme evolutionary fitness on this planet. Because life is like a sprint with a lot of traps. And the better your navigational system is, the better you can dodge those traps and sprint the longest. And even emotions can be explained as specialized states shaped by natural selection that increase fitness in specific situations. The psychological, physiological and behavioral characteristics of a specific emotion can be analyzed as possible design features that increase the ability to cope with the threats and opportunities present in the corresponding situation. Which concludes that even the involuntary cognitions can be seen as yet another navigational tool that provides fitness. In other words, it must have some kind of use to us. The most common concept is the warning signal. In this way, the involuntary cognition functions as a warning signal in the present situation. And there are many other hypothetical functions like this. The brain seems to be always on, always getting affected, always rambling on and on about the things that can concern you. And this can be positive, but it can also affect you negatively. Because these neurophysiological systems weren't evolutionarily designed to cope with the aspects of the modern world. Chronic exposure to stress hormones, whether it occurs during the prenatal period, infancy, childhood, adolescence, adulthood or aging, has an impact on brain structures involved in cognition and mental health. Depression and mental health are big problems right now and are produced socially. Which means that what you are surrounded by actually changes your brain. And these changes are possible because of the plasticity of the brain. It refers to the capacity of the nervous system to change its structure and ultimately its function over a lifetime. And this is huge, because if you get addicted, for example, your brain will change in a way that it'll support these kinds of behaviors. While on the other hand, if you build behaviors that cope with the ongoing stress and involuntary cognitions of everyday life, you'll manifest objective neural structures that let you deal with these problems much better. One great way of dealing with internal involuntary cognitions and many external effects is mindful meditation. 
This cognitive exercise is basically you getting into a comfortable place and focusing on something, like your breath for example. In this meta-analysis from 2015 on the neuroscience of mindfulness meditation, the famous Nature magazine published an article that said, mindfulness practice improves emotion regulation and reduces stress. And another meta-analysis from 2016 concluded that meditation can reduce stress, improve concentration level and attention level. And there are many other studies that go way deeper beyond what I want to explain in this video. But if you want, you can pause and read it for yourself. And I'll end this video with a metaphor to keep in mind. Your brain is just like a muscle. And in order to improve it, just like in sports, you need to contract and tense it. Focusing on something, concentrating, is just like tensing your brain, which exercises it in a way that it'll get stronger and it'll improve. How your brain is functioning literally dictates your life. So working on that is one of the best things you can do. Thanks for watching.